let me take you back to 2006. The PS3 was about to release and take the world by storm with its astounding lack of games. Sony needed some impressive launch titles to showcase the power of its new console and cement its place in the next generation of gaming. So, during a board meeting, the executive said, Hey, we have all these established franchises we can use, but what about those mediocre hack and slash games we released for the PSP? Then they snorted a bunch of coke, their mistresses slapped their balls around, and overall, it was a good day at the office. And that's how we got Untold Legends Dark Kingdom, an action RPG with nothing in common with the previous titles, besides the name. Expectations were pretty high, everyone was clamoring for an expansive role-playing adventure, with immersive graphics and complex gameplay for their new overpriced console. But does Dark Kingdom manage to fulfill those expectations and surpass its predecessors? Chances are pretty low since no one remembers this game anymore, but maybe it's a hidden gem of sorts? Let's find out! The Kingdom of Durath, an ancient land of untold legend, a land that has prospered for over a thousand years, a land I swore to protect. I command the Dragon Shade. We are an elite squad of warriors who draw essence from our fallen enemies. After years of conflict with the barbarian clans to the north, away from king and country, we prepare our final assault. But only now, on the eve of victory, will I confirm my worst fear. That in mine absence, a darkness has consumed my homeland. Dark Kingdom definitely has a story and its story definitely has characters in it that say stuff. You play as a member of an elite order of warriors called the Dragon's Shade, a very imposing name indeed. What sets you apart from everyone else is your ability to absorb an enemy's essence by extracting their electrolytes through accurate sword slices at their weak points. Oh shit, wrong game. Anyway, the Kingdom of Dureth is in turmoil and you are sent to quell the barbarian revolution that plagues the land. After a long tutorial level, you fight the barbarian leader, who after his crushing defeat cries out, no, I'm not the bad guy, the king is. So of course we believe him and fly to the king's castle to confirm those rumors. An intense confrontation takes place between the Order General and the king. My liege, are you the bad guy? Uh, yeah, I'm the king and I'm the bad guy. I love eating human souls and making my people piss and shit themselves with my dark, evil, bad guy powers. <gasps> it cannot be! If king is the bad guy, then I must kill king. Heh, <laughs> looks like you're the untold legend's dark kingdom after all. Guards, take him away! After an extreme escape sequence and a legendary fight scene, General Torrent dies and our ship gets destroyed. Barely escaping with our lives, we must now gather our strength and find a way to return to the king's castle to destroy him and bring an end to his corrupted sorcery once and for all. Man, what an absolute bore fest of a plot this is! Not that the series ever had any captivating stories to begin with, but this one is especially generic and full of pointless filler. Plus, everyone talks in that annoying Shakespearean ye olde English, making it really hard for me to take anything seriously. The king has gone mad! Speak not ill of my king, sir, else your life be forfeit. Better I die today than be fed to the dark power that consumes your master. I warned you once, my king is my liege, slander him not. Oh, my fair maiden, mayhap I shall taketh and dumpeth on thy chest, for thine pleasureth? Get out of here with that annoying shit. There is just no flair, everything is by the numbers, and the high fantasy setting brings nothing new to the table. The dialogues are bland, any attempt at humor falls flat, no one has any characterization, and nothing was motivating me to keep going. It doesn't help that many cutscenes consist of still images, and when they're not, their animations are terrible. 
We entered the Silver Cathedral, but it was an ambush. What we saw was... Ugh. Telra! Telra! You know what? I take that back. The animations are incredible and provide hours of endless laughter. All in all, as far as the story goes, the game plays out pretty much like a bargain bin fantasy novel. Not a good start at all. Dark Kingdom came out in a period when video games were trying to be more realistic, more next-gen, and more impressive in general. And for that, it paid the ultimate price. Excessive bloom making everything too bright, plastic-looking textures, glorious 720p resolution, and jagged edges up the wazoo. Yep, it's a 2006 game, alright. But that doesn't mean that it's not a beautiful game, despite those shortcomings. The environments look great, the textures are incredibly detailed, and the models look nice and crisp, except for the human ones. They look like scary-ass skinwalkers with terrifyingly long fingers and cold dead eyes. Still, everything looks pretty and there is a decent enough variety of levels to keep you entertained, at least for a while. The game starts very strong, with a beautiful forest area and an impressive flying castle, but then it deteriorates to a bunch of dark caves, sewers and linear corridors. Oh well, at least the animations are smooth and the game runs at a steady frame rate, even when there is a ton of enemies overwhelming you. Upscale the resolution and it looks amazing, I can even play it on my Steam Deck with no issues. Thank you Gaben! You got me, I've been emulating this whole time, please don't tell my mommy. But yeah, the graphics are great and even the music is good for the first time in the series. It actually sounds like something professionals worked on, nothing like the dark evil beats they cook for the PSP games. Sure, it's a little overdramatic hearing epic choirs and bombastic orchestral music when I'm trudging along sewer corridor number 347, but hey, it's an astounding improvement regardless. Overall, it's an impressive PS3 launch title, as far as the presentation goes. My only complaint is the art style. Just like the story, it's unbelievably bland and generic. They tried to maintain some of the stylistic choices used in the previous games, specifically leaning more into the bizarre aesthetics of the Warrior's Code. But everything has been smoothed out to the point that nothing really unique or memorable remains. Still, it's a good looking experience, all things considered. It just looks like your standard high fantasy slop. Here comes the decisive factor of it all, the gameplay. I mentioned at the start that Dark Kingdom is an action RPG, but does that mean anything these days? It's the most generic definition there is. So let's dive deeper into it. Let's name our hero first. Um, what the S word? They censored my name in a single player game for some fucked up reason. Is slet even a bad word? Oh, I guess it is. In fucking duds. Well, thank you Sony for looking out for the youth, you wankers. Now on to the game. You have three different classes you can choose from. A warrior with powerful melee attacks but limited magic abilities. A scout who is quick and agile but mediocre overall. And a mage, weak physically but with strong magic spells. The originality here is through the roof. But in any case, the game's core experience is fighting monsters in standard hack and slash combat, leveling up your stats and acquiring new gear to become even stronger. The combat system is the game's strongest point, without a doubt. 
there are various combos you can use to defeat your enemies. It's with its cool animations and effects. And fighting in general is very quick, fluid and visceral. You can really feel the weight of its attack, since your stronger attacks can ragdoll enemies around like they're made out of paper. Oh boy, this game is obsessed with ragdoll physics, and it's a delight. Grouping a bunch of enemies together and then seeing them shoot out into the air like they just came out of an exploding piñata is just so amusing. On the flip side though, enemies can ragdoll you as well, and they're gonna do that a lot. So if you love getting Fusrodad by Dragor Overlords, you're gonna love this game. Killing enough enemies will eventually level you up, giving you a staggering 2 points to distribute among your stats, and a whopping 1 point to unlock or improve your spells. It's not even worth it man, experience gain is way too slow, and with how little you can customize your character statistics, it just felt pointless to me. But wait, you can also change your equipment as well. And by that, I mean wearing different armor pieces to boost your stats and enchanting your weapon with different gems to marginally improve its abilities. There are no shops whatsoever. You can break down any equipment you don't need for yellow essence, which is money basically. And at every save point, you can use that essence to buy armor and gems or refill your health and mana. Armor bought from the save point will always be better than whatever you'll find in the wild. So yeah, great incentive for exploration there, guys. But besides all that, there's also... Oh man... The very moment I started playing, I had this sinking feeling. And after only a few hours, I was right. There is nothing else to this game, unless you count collecting keys, turning valves, and pushing boxes as thrilling gameplay. The whole adventure is basically an endless loop of walking into a room and defeating all the enemies, until the game's credits. There is nothing else to mix things up. I was begging for something, even a turret section. But no, the game slapped me with the obligatory sewer level, repetitive encounters, and boss fights that are just regular enemies scaled up. And that sucks because the gameplay is competent and the combat can be fun, but when there is nothing else to add some variety, it just becomes brain rot worse than whatever popular thing I dislike that will become dated in a few years. However, if you enjoy simplistic hack and slash experiences, you might get a kick out of it. I just wanted something more from this, that's all. Dark Kingdom had a lot of obstacles to overcome. Expectations from fans of the series, all two of them, the technical limitations of the PS3 and the need to showcase what a next-gen experience can offer. Technically speaking, the game succeeded. The graphics look amazing, the music is surprisingly decent and the combat is fun and addictive. But the art style is so generic, the plot so predictable and the gameplay so repetitive that it ends up being an incredibly bland adventure. It feels like a game some Lord of the Rings nerd would play in a TV show, not a real thing. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. It's just a perfectly average experience. You might enjoy it, but I personally found it boring. I'm actually surprised I managed to write that much about it. Thankfully though, for both our sakes, that's all I had to say about Untold Legends Dark Kingdom. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, leave a like if you did, comment your thoughts below and subscribe for more stuff, you know how it goes. You can also join my discord and follow me on twitter. Have a great day and until next time, take care and have fun.